The seat is awfully hot. Yeah. <laughs> it was warm. You put pressure on it. Fair. Do you have a few extra papers there by chance that you? Did I take your papers too? Yeah. I'm sorry. I take one of those. <laughs> All right. Now we're back at it. Thank you, Councillor Fair. Uh, we'll now move to 11B, and that's uh, Brenda Brown from the Headway Program. Uh, Brenda, I'll ask you to take the podium, state your name and address, and tell us why you're here, and I'll give you a few minutes to speak. Thank you. It's an honor to be here this evening. My name is Brenda Brown, and I live in Steinbach. Do you want my exact street address? That's all right. Just Main Street. Yeah. <laughs> I've lived in Steinbach for um, almost 30 years, and I have a huge heart for the community of Steinbach. And um, going a little bit more micro, I have a huge heart for hurting teenagers. I've been working with at-risk youth for over 10 years in Steinbach, and um, just newly now working in, under the capacity of headway. So I was just going to tell you a little bit about our program, and um, yeah, here's a little, okay. So Headway is a program that exists to support at-risk youth and their families. It's a brand new program that is coming to Steinbeck, or is in Steinbeck. We started up as of January, and it's a multi-agency wraparound um, program that was initiated by the six agencies, the six main agencies that work with at-risk youth who live within our community. Um, it's managed to support struggling youth and their family in order to help them. They're the largest consumers of often policing, CFS, and school-based issues. Um, I have found in my years of working with at-risk youth, I usually just worked with the youth themselves, and we had an impact on those youth, but often I would meet a student and I would think, man, I, I, don't, I don't get you, I don't understand why you are where you are, and then I'd meet their parents and I'd go, oh, I understand why you are where you are, and so for us to be able to impact the families as well as the youth will have a much more profound impact on our community. So the key to Headway is actually working with the parents and the youth, not just the youth, where we would be able to have them um, come to the table to be able to share openly about their problems, their concerns, and their lack of resources. Um, because understanding the, the reason behind the behavior will help us to understand and increase the chances of success while also decreasing the burden on social services. So Headway was um, built on a program that has been long established in Selkirk. The program there has been running, I believe, for 14 years and is very, very well established. The success rate of um, the START program for the youth that they work with is 85 to 95 percent success rate of getting these kids stable. Um, which is just astounding. The program that was running in Stonewall within the first year, they had a 50% reduction in youth-related crime in the first year that they were running. There's five different programs running in the province apart from Selkirk. Um, there's Thompson, Dauphin, Gimli, and us. Um, the reason that they started it is that they just they found that there needed to be a collaboration um, you know, because CFS is working with the same student as the school is trying to deal with, as the RCMP officers are trying to deal with, but nobody can talk to each other. Nobody knows really the full picture. All the school knows is that little Jimmy hasn't shown up for school and they're frustrated, but meanwhile he was in lockup last night. So this is our, um, our model. Before Headway was there, there was no line behind between those circles. So we had these different agencies supporting one family and youth, but nobody could talk to each other. Um, and it's, it's very exhausting for families that are utilizing multi-agencies to be able to go and meet with all of these agencies. Um, this is kind of a one-stop shop. So what do we do? We bring agencies together with the youth and family to, bring, to make appropriate plans. The agencies that Headway is involved with is the RCMP, Child and Family Services, the Hanover School Division, um, Mental Health, the Addictions Foundation, and it's the last one that I missed. The School Division. 
Um, we follow up on commitments by agencies, youth and the family. Um, prior to Headway coming to Steinbeck, they did try a collaborative approach to support at-risk youth and their family. It was without a coordinator. And they found that what was happening ex is exactly this point, is that there would be commitments made by agencies or commitments made by the youth and their family, but nobody to hold them accountable. So one of the parts of my job is then to phone Child and Family Services and said, you know, you said you were going to work on getting a personal support worker for this youth. Has that happened? Oh, thanks for reminding me. It slipped my mind or whatever it is. Or the youth has promised to, um, to add an additional class to their repertoire because they only had one class that they were attending to. So it would be my job or somebody else on the team to phone them to make sure that they're following through on that. Um, we provide day-to-day -day support and agency referral. Um, so I make sure once a week to phone the parents, check in on them, um, see if, what, if they need anything, um, and also agency referral. We're finding um, with this program that often there's unaddressed needs, usually in the case of mental health or the addiction. Um, so if, there is, if one of our clients, um, we're, we're seeing them struggle, as a team we would decide, you know what, we're going to make a referral to mental health. And that, again, is, is kind of part and parcel of that. We advocate on behalf of the youth and family for appropriate services, such as mental health or addictions. Um, we keep the file open until the youth has six months of stability. By stability, what we mean is that the at-risk youth hasn't contacted any of the involved agencies for six months, um, which means they are, are stable. Um, and at that point, they would be eased out of our program. Um, not to say that if they had some issues come up again, they couldn't come back for support but that is our definition of stability. How does it work? Our program is governed by um, a steering committee. The steering committee is made up of representatives from the agencies that are involved. Um, and that the steering committee decides like all the governing um, portions of the program. We also have a screening committee also made up of representatives from those agencies. And the screening committee is um, responsible to obviously screen the kids in whether or not they're appropriate and make those decisions, but they're also um, filled in on all the clients and what is going on with them and making recommendations for referrals and um, support that way. Um, the Headway program, in order to qualify, the youth need to be between the ages of 12 and 19. They need to be involved with three of the involved agencies. Um, and they also need to be within the RM of Hanover area. That being said, at our last screening meeting, um, there was an application from a little boy who was 10 years old. And he had, just with his application and all the things he was going through, our screening just, um, committee decided, rather than wait two years till he gets further down the road he's on, that we would accept him into our program. And in fact, there's a little boy in the Selkirk program who's eight. Um, how are they referred? Anybody can refer a youth to this program. A youth could walk into my office and say, help me, and they could refer themselves. Um, we still need parental consent if they're under the age, but um, anybody can refer a youth to our program. And again, the screening committee decides who gets into headway. I do not, based on our um, criteria. And a youth can be a client as long as they need to be. Once they hit age 20, then we would like to transition them out of our program into a more appropriate program for them. Um, our program is funded by um, the Hanover School Division, Child and Family Services, and um, the RM of Hanover at the moment, as well as a few other um, small smaller donations. Um, the RCMP has also graciously given me an office space and a computer and a stapler, so um, that's really helpful. <laughs> <We're generous. laughs> <laughs> this model works because collaborations are powerful, coming together and around these families and kids. They truly include the youth and the family. There's no judgment. Um, in working with, with um, dysfunctional families, often there's a shame and there's an embarrassment and there's, um, they often feel like people are kind of picking on them. So we really try to provide an atmosphere of acceptance and like how can we help you, what, what resources do you need and, and really loving the people. Um, all the client's information is in one place so I have a file with all the information from all the different agencies as much as, um, as we can 
which just really helps out for the parents as well as um, creating a really a good picture of what's going on in the situation, not just one small piece of the puzzle. Um, we're also on top of issues faster. Um, there was a boy in Selkirk who was meeting with a social worker every month and a social worker would ask, how's school? School's fine. The next month, how's school? One of many questions, of course. School's fine. They find out two months later that he wasn't actually in school. He was just saying the school is fine. So in the case of Headway, something like that couldn't happen because we would be sharing information and in contact with each other. Um, we also pool resources. For the school to get a forensic assessment, for example, of a student cost $1,200. Um, probations, it is included as part of their, their mandate. And so um, if we are meeting together as a group and someone needs a forensic assessment, then we would be able to do that without having to incur the high cost. Um, fewer chances for manipulation, same kind of, oops, story about Yeah, and again, it belongs to everyone. This isn't a Hanover School Division thing. This isn't uh, a show for me or the RCMP. This is a community thing started by the agencies in our community. Um, just really quickly, there was an assessment done of the Selkirk program, and it, it's fascinating. And um, so they studied the program to see what the outcomes were. It was done by a professor at the University of Manitoba. And these are, I'll just skip through to the next slide because it's the same thing. These are the statistics. So there was a 81.6% improved living situation for these kids, increased understanding of youth challenges, um, attained a better knowledge of at-risk activities was 100%, like that's just astounding. Um, improved attendance and participation in school, 80%. We can read the rest of those, but um, it has a profound impact on, on struggling kids for sure. I'm not going to read through all of this, but there's been a couple of studies done at just the cost of at-risk youth. And, you know, the question is, how many of these kids can be prevented before this program pays for itself? But um, just going down to the fifth point there, like if a, if, a, if a youth is, you know, a drug user and also a criminal, there can be a savings if we can save that kid from going down the road from 1.7 to 2.3 million dollars. You know that's um, you know loss from from theft. That's prison time. That's CFS. That's RCMP. All of those different things. Um, those are just more stats. I think you all have them in front of you there if you wish to read them. But the, the cost is enormous, and the last point there is one of the most important findings, however, is that although juvenile offending behavior accounts for a small fraction of the total cost, like just when they're youth, if they can be prevented from becoming career criminals, the savings may be enormous. Giving to headway is an investment, it's not an expense. And those are our funding partners at the moment. So um, right now our budget is set at um, roughly $70,000. Um, a lot of that has been donated, or 18,000 of that has been donated gifts in kind from the Hanover School Division and from the RCMP. Um, the Hanover School Division is our banker and so they do all of our administration. They do all our financial operations. Um, and then we've had other donations, but we are still currently looking for $20,000. So we wanted to come before the city today and just ask whether or not you would be willing to contribute something to this program. Um, we really feel like it's going to have a, a very large impact on our community, on our youth, on our families, um, decrease crime, um, and even just the morale of our, of our city. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Are there questions? Yeah, Councillor Councilor Siemens. <coughs> Through you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome here, Ms. Brown. How are Thank you? Thank you. I'm fine. Three uh, came to mind. You're, you're talking about the youth at risk in the community. I understand that. Uh, I sat on the Youth Justice Committee for for many years. So, and how do you connect to the Youth Justice Committee backstage to community outreach? These are all value add programs in our yeah. community that uh, aren't. At least you didn't talk about them. How you connect to them? Is there mm -hmm. there's those, and there's still others potentially. How do you connect to all those different 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I actually, I sit on the Steinbach Drug Awareness Council, and so there, there's representatives from some of those agencies that you mentioned, so I am in relationship with them. Um, we also utilize um, the Steinbach Community Outreach as a resource for some of our families, that I have that in my back pocket in case we need it. Um, excuse me, I'm also in contact with the workers at Youth for Christ um, fairly regularly. I actually just talked to them today, um, just in regards to some students and their... their um, bird's eye view on that because by no means do we want to duplicate what anybody's doing. Um, that's not our mandate at all. It's rather to enhance what's going on and to bring people together. Thank you. Further questions? Seeing none, thank you for the uh, information. Obviously you're doing very good work and you're doing work that uh, will improve our community. So thank you very much. Uh, as for the specific ask that you added at the end, uh, uh, we will have a response to you, uh, which probably will include our policy and, and the guide, guidelines around that. So, sure. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. All right, Council, we will now move to 7C, and that's the uh, Staff Sergeant Harold Leninga. You don't have to say your name and your address. Excellent. <laughs> we I will apologize for you. not having a PowerPoint, though. Apparently, <laughs> uh, first of all, thanks very much. And I just want to also encourage you, uh, you know, as you deal with your processes uh, with Brenda's uh, request, um, we're trying to make generational changes. And we're hoping that by affecting the kids of today, they're going to become our future parents. Uh, we're hoping to make direct notes to those kids, give them the skills they need as they become parents. And uh, so you, we wouldn't have the Headway program, in my opinion, if it wasn't for the support of the city. You guys uh, were on board immediately uh, through the RCP Advisory Committee. Both Susan and Carrie were instrumental in bringing it together, and I thank them for their support. Um, so just, uh, yeah, we just uh, respectfully request uh, for your assistance now furthering it and keeping it going. Am I allowed to talk about this part? Is this the only other thing we mentioned the Arm of Hanover is that if you could consider a, a sum that you could do yearly. Because we're trying to, what we're trying to do is have a, a program in place that will uh, extend itself into the future. This isn't a one-year thing. To make this truly successful, we need to keep this going every year. So what we're, we asked the Arm of Hanover to consider was a, was a sum of money that they could provide every year. And uh, that's all I'll add to that. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions for our staff, our staff sergeant? We do have other information here. Uh, I don't know if you want to answer any questions in regards to the, uh, the occurrence stats that were provided for us. Yes, I'm, I'm here for that. Are there, so, are there any questions? Councillor Penner. Uh, one, one in particular, um, looking at the occurrence statistics um, and the provincial <coughs> traffic offenses uh, are significantly higher in 2015 than they were in 2014. Can you answer why that is? I guess specifically, uh, I've done a lot of whining, trying to get, uh, and honestly, I've spoken to you in the past as part of the advisory committee, some of the issues with uh, our traffic services and the fact that uh, the RCP is doing uh, some uh, repositioning and uh, the RCP, uh, the traffic services is, is much reduced here in Steinbeck right now. But I've had a lot of meetings at headquarters within our Winnipeg area saying this area is the fastest growing area in Manitoba. I've done st uh, you know, studies on our traffic, and our traffic is right up there. If you look at the traffic between Steinbach and Blumenort, we have equivalent to average annual daily traffic, uh, equivalent to um, the west, uh, west number one, like if you go past uh, Headingley or east of number one if you go past Lorette, so, or yeah, the Lorette turnoff. So those are the kind of numbers we're dealing with, approximately 13,000 a day. So because of that, because of unfortunately the fatalities we've had in our area, the accidents we've had, I've asked for increased uh, patrols here, that is happening. And our own members are obviously also very cognizant of the issues and they're working to achieve those goals also. Thank so you. I think there is a marked uh, increase and I'm very glad to see that. Thank you. Further questions? I do see uh, very clearly that we, uh, we stated that we wanted to see as priorities uh, organized crime, drug, re uh, drug use reduction, also uh, property offenses and so on. And when we see that, that we created that in 2014, we suggested that that's where we wanted to head. And then when you look at 2015 uh, and what has gone on there, between 2014 and 2015, we see, very sig we see significant decreases in both drug uh, enforcement uh, issues. We see a decrease in thefts by, by more than half, 
and we see vehicle thefts uh, more than half as well. Are those all <coughs> interrelated with the work that has been done to reduce the drug use and, and, and so on, and enforcement? I believe so. I, I think, again, uh, uh, I think council has been very supportive in giving us a two-person GIS unit, and I think because of that, we've been able to make the inroads we can. There's been several times over the past few years that I've said, I don't know what we would do if it wasn't for our GIS unit, because of the nature of the files they're taking on, and uh, I think you've probably seen the paper, some of the work that they have done, and, and it's ongoing. Um, you know, I think there's, there's no... Uh, no surprise to anyone here that there is a meth issue in Steinbach right now. And I think you're seeing that uh, some of the vandalism, or what I call the, the minor thefts and, and mischiefs, have gone up because of that. But we directly targeted that, and I think now we're starting to see a, a reduction because of the work that was done. So um, I'm glad to see the stats reflect that. Yes. <coughs> Anything further? All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for appreciate that. Mr. Working Dean, uh, do you also need a resolution in regards to our uh, page seven? We have the recommendation or the uh, uh, community priority issues uh, stated there. Uh, yes, the, uh, there is information that has been provided uh, showing what the uh, resolution of council uh, had chosen as its uh, performance plan priorities uh, in the past review. Uh, if council is satisfied with those priorities as they are listed, uh, they could uh, issue another resolution to confirm. Uh, if they wish to change, they could also do so. Thank you. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Funk? Motion to confirm. Confirm. Second by Councillor Swagster. Go ahead. Um, no, we, we really are very thankful for, for our RCMP that are in our, our community. And we, you're doing a great job. We're very, very thankful for you. We'd like to see you uh, more, more in our community, do more. And we've seen the benefits of what you're doing. We ask you just to continue, and going along with these, these uh, priorities that we've approved, it just sounds the way to go. So thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Councillor Swagstrom. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll certainly support the comments, and uh, we're very appreciative of the work that uh, the RCP does in, uh, in our community. These priorities are good. Uh, it makes sense that we, uh, we continue to go after organized crime. We want visibility to the police to continue uh, dealing with property crimes and also traffic. These are important areas. These are areas that, uh, that are an issue in a growing city like ours. And so we appreciate the work the RCP does in this regard. It's also good to hear that the GIS unit is being put to good use. We all knew it would be. And uh, that uh, creating the GIS unit, that's one of those areas that it wasn't hard to get unanimous agreement among council and support and community amongst organizations. That is very valuable to have a dedicated, dedicated group of officers that are uh, able to spend focused time dealing with some of these larger crime issues. So these are good priorities and we definitely want to continue moving in this direction. Thank you. Further discussion? Anything in closing? <coughs> council, I think we've seen uh, clearly the good work the RCMP is doing. Uh, uh, the quarterly report, we see some uh, marked success. Uh, let's continue to see that. Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. We'll now move to 8B, and that is the Old Tom, Rob, Old Tom Road Improvement uh, Tender Award information. And we have that, followed, <coughs> that is followed in your package. We now have Mr. Workentine. Can I ask you to introduce uh, this information, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. This uh, is a recommendation for a tender award package for uh, the asphalt surfacing of Old Tom Road uh, in 2016. Uh, the uh, tender for this project closed March 24th, 2016, with six bids received. Uh, the recommendation by the project engineer to ACOM Canada is to award the tender uh, on a reduced scope basis to Bituminex Paving LTD, uh, and uh, that information is attached. Uh, that uh, also concurs with management's recommendation uh, to award a uh, reduced scope tender. Uh, the low tender from Bituminex was actually uh, uh, listed at $1,058,417. Uh, that amount with the uh, estimated engineering and design costs of about 40000 uh, will bring the total project cost uh, estimates uh, to approximately $200,000 over what uh, budget funding is uh, approved for for 2016. Uh, and therefore, the recommendation is that uh, the actual tender award to Bituminex be reduced 
to meet the city's available budgeted value of approximately 875,000 for the actual work. Uh, that will <coughs> su uh, allow sufficient uh, uh, budget room to allow for all the additional costs with respect to engineering and design to uh, reach the max of $1 million. Thank you. How would council like to proceed? Councillor Siemens. I would, uh, due to the fact that we only got this information today and we are over budget, I would like to make a recommendation that we push it, this decision to the next meeting so we get further information on possible uh, areas that uh, we can recover funds. Basically. So you're suggesting we table this? We table it Mr. Workentine, uh, what is our timeline for <coughs> approving? Uh, standard tender award does have uh, a 60 day award period. Which would bring us to? Uh, roughly the end of May. Thank you. So there's a move to table, second, seconded by Councillor Fair. Go ahead, Councillor Siemens. Uh, I think uh, this information was in our package uh, today, and uh, since the, the dollar figure is uh, exceeded the amount that we've approved under our, our budget, we need to either find funds or uh, reject this project altogether. I'm not in favor of rejecting project, but I'm just looking for get feedback from, further feedback from the administration that we can see where potentially we could find additional funds to complete this project. Thank you. Councillor Fair. Okay. Anything further from Council? Anything closer? Council, uh, obviously we see this as a priority uh, project for us. Uh, it is slightly over budget. Uh, cutting back the scope, I think, uh, is one option that we have, and it continues to be an option for us as we move forward. But uh, looking at, <coughs> at the project and having simply a, a small section where it isn't complete uh, seems a bit... Uh, doesn't seem like the direction that we should be heading. So I think uh, taking our time, asking for more information, looking for a possibility of uh, saving a few dollars or finding dollars in a different part of the budget, reallocating I think is appropriate. So we will, uh, I feel comfortable tabling this and we will also ask administration to come up with some uh, ideas and uh, we will uh, work on those together. Call for the question, all those in favor of tabling. Thank you. Passed. We have the land purchase, 8C, 736 Hanover, on page 19. Mr. Workentine. Uh, this is a parcel of land at, uh, located at 376 Hanover Street. Uh, the, uh, the strategy that uh, City Council has directed administration to follow for uh, many years has been to assemble parcels of land in the area for future development uh, as parcels become available. Uh, this uh, parcel fits that criteria. Uh, and as such, uh, along with uh, the appraised value uh, report that was provided by uh, the accredited appraisal, uh, the city has made an offer uh, for the same value to the current owner uh, for the amount of $205,000. Uh, and that offer has been tentatively accepted, subject to council's approval. Uh, management is rec uh, recommending that uh, the uh, offer to purchase be approved. Thank you. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Penner? Move to approve. Thank you. Second by Councillor mm -hmm. Swagstra. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, uh, this lot on uh, 376 Hanover will um, continue our uh, practice and our uh, direction with purchasing land in this area. Uh, in our official community plan, um, it also fits as well, using this land for a variety of uses. So uh, this is what we have done in the past. We've set this direction. I feel it is only prudent to continue to do this as uh, part of our planning development process. Thank you. Councilor Spikstra? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will uh, support the motion. Uh, as has been mentioned, uh, the city has been purchasing uh, properties in, uh, in this area, in the downtown area in particular, for uh, over two decades now. It's uh, been a long-term uh, process because uh, as the city grows, there are uh, uh, there are times where we know that there are going to be needs for uh, what the city may do with the land in that area. There's any number of things that can be used for the city. We may hold on to the property for some time, and we have the opportunity of keeping the house there in terms of the rental, and, and as has happened for other properties, until a decision is made in terms of what happens to the property. But uh, it makes sense for the city to uh, uh, to continue with its long-term strategy. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Siemens? Mr. Mayor, I won't vote in favour of the motion. I think that... Uh, these are starter homes that we're taking off the market. 
that these are fixer uppers for uh, first time homeowners uh, in our downtown location. And uh, while the city has had a policy of buying up a lot of these lots, I think it's been only been in the last 10 years that they've been buying them on this side of Hanover. This is still a transitional zone uh, in our community plan and uh, I, I feel it's not right for the city to be buying these properties when there's no plan in place. Thank you for the discussion. Anything in closing? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Council, uh, we, there has been a long standing process of uh, purchasing land uh, in this area. We do have, uh, if, including this one, if this purchase proceeds, there will be four of five lots that are owned by the city along that stretch. Uh, whatever the plan, uh, whatever transpires in that area, uh, it does increase the value of those other lots substantially as you, uh, uh, as you uh, uh, put these lots together. So I think uh, it's only prudent to proceed. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. All right, we have 9A. We have accounts payable in the back of the book. Your green, green tag. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Funk. Second by Councillor Penner. Any discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. We have the financial statement ending for ending January in the back of the book as well, in your yellow tab. Thank you. Councillor Siemens, second by Councillor Fair. Any discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? We have February as well in the back of the book. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Fair. Any discussion? No. Call for the question. All those in favor? There. We have the financial plan on page 23. Mr. Workentine, just to, to summarize, please. Uh, yes, the, uh, with the uh, financial plan public hearing that uh, was scheduled and held uh, earlier this year in February, uh, City Council passed a resolution to adopt in principle the City's 2016 financial plan. Uh, information received from the province of Manitoba and the Hanover School Division has now been received with respect to the annual school tax requirements. Uh, those uh, required uh, collections and payments have now been entered into the plan uh, and uh, Council may now proceed to give formal adoption to the 2016 financial plan in its entirety. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Worgandy, where which page is that? Uh, that can be found on page 23. That is on page 23, okay. Yeah. And there is a draft resolution on that page as well. Yeah, thank you. All right, Council. Councilor Spikes, sir, you move to approve. Thank you. Seconded by Councilor Penner. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It was a good financial plan when we approved it in principle uh, a few months ago, and uh, it remains a good financial plan now. There's a lot of things that are happening in the city in terms of our infrastructure and uh, continuing to put money aside for various things and uh, having a net zero increase. So those are all good things, and it's, uh, they remain good things now. Thank you. Councillor Penner? No further comment. Anything further from Council? Anything closing? You, you don't want to change it to find that money for Old Tom Road uh, <laughs> quickly? All right. Uh, we have already approved this in principle, and we have it in front of us. Uh, Council, uh, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. We'll move to 9E, and that's the bylaw 2062-2016 uh, Realty Education uh, Tax Levy on page 42. Council, how would you like to proceed? Need a first and second reading. Move first reading. Move first reading. Thank you, Councillor Penner. Second by Councillor Siemens. Any discussion? No. Any further discussion from Council? Seeing none, call for the question on first reading. All those in favor? Opposed? <coughs> Carried. Councillor Pen uh, Councillor Penner, you, I didn't see your hand. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm not right. Thank you. Maybe. That is unanimous. Just to be clear. Uh, uh, motion, for, motion for second reading, Councillor Fair. No, you don't want to move for second reading. <laughs> Councillor for second reading, Councillor <laughs> Funk. Thank you. Second by Councillor. There's six of you, Councillor Siemens. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. 
We have bylaw 2063, the business tax levy on uh, page 47. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Penner, move first reading. Move first reading. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Fair. Any discussion? This continues our practice of a 0.5% business tax levy. Thank you. Anything further from Council? Call for the question. All those in favor of first reading? Carried. Second reading, please. Councillor Swagstra, Councillor Funk, any discussion? Anything further from Council? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. We now move to 9G, subdivision 4451, 2015 7651. This is a condominium plan on page 51. Mr. Workington. Uh, this particular subdivision application uh, is file 2015-7651 uh, with civic address of 236 Park Road West. Purpose of the subdivision application is to create a bare land condominium subdivision consisting of 16 industrial purpose lots. Uh, the bare land condo plan will be required to comply with all city requirements uh, as it pertains to the light industrial zone. Uh, recommendation is that City Council approve the subdivision uh, for the bare land condo. Uh, prior to the execution of a development agreement. Thank you. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Penner. Move to approve. Thank you. Seconder. Councillor Penner. Go ahead. Yes. Um, this application is to um, is proposing a, an industrial bare land condominium. Um, and I think it's a very good thing for the city. I, I am very comfortable with the information about the uh, bare land condominium and how it's proposed to go forward. It, mil it will meet all city specs and, uh, and it falls within all of the requirements of our zoning bylaw. Thank you for the discussion. Further discussion from Council. Council, I think it is, it's important to note that this is the, uh, this is a bare land condominium and it is happening on the old uh, campsite uh, and so we just, so that we are aware of that. Uh, this is a transition from what it is being used to where it is going. All right, any further discussion? I know this isn't a public hearing, I'm sorry. Any chance Yes. <laughs> no, sorry. I, 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 shouldn't, I shouldn't be, no. My family brought it to my attention that there's something we enter happening, so we will, we want to move forward with this application, but we will not go into construction until after the summer. All right, we will ignore, ignore that, <laughs> that comment because we have protocol to follow, but uh, you got me. Uh, anything further from Council? Seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. We'll, uh, we have 9H, Subdivision Bylaw 4451, 2011, 5410. It's page 69. Mr. Workington. Uh, this is a uh, further uh, application for subdivision, file number 2011-5410. Uh, and that is actually uh, a property uh, located at the extension of uh, Lund Road, uh, just south of the Mid-Canada Millwork um, property. Um, Purpose is to create this uh, bare land residential uh, condominium subdivision with 14 buildings uh, and consisting of 56 lots. Um, the, uh, this file relates to uh, a file council recently uh, gave 30 reading to with respect to rezoning bylaw 2015, which had been outstanding for some time. Uh, the recommendation is to approve. All right. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Siemens. Thank you. Second by Councillor Penner. Go ahead. Uh, this has had a long history, uh, this uh, development. Uh, it, I think it was before the municipal board for a while there was objections to it. And uh, those, uh, so it's been, uh, I think it was three years ago when it was at council for the first time, but uh, made the motion to approve it. It does create, uh, is a buffer between the current residence and the industrial park but it is additional housing, but it is a, it is a condominium uh, style, it's a land condominium, so it's <coughs> no responsibility for clearing snow and garbage. 
Thank you. Mr. Just to add to uh, Councillor Seaman's comments, uh, we've had success in the city with uh, bare land condominium residential uh, development, so I think that will be a very good thing. Very good. Thank you. Councillor Fair, please. Uh, uh, I've got a question of administ administration. Do we ever have any uh, concerns from any of the bare land condos? I, I know uh, the comments are here. Uh, do we ever have people that complain about the uh, slack of snow removal because it's a bare land condo or do any uh, do people could express that at all or mm, when they do they are directed uh, to the condo association which takes care of those services within the development but they do come up from time to time on occasion they do ask questions yes anything further from council council seems you anything in closing Council, it's good to see this moving ahead. This is something that's been on the books for quite some time. This is uh, a number of uh, units that people can purchase, and I suspect they'll, uh, as their condominiums, they'll be reasonably priced, and so they'll either be starter homes or places where people can, uh, that are at least affordable. And so look forward to this coming to fruition in that location. Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. All right, we will move to uh, 9I, the appointment of a weed inspector on page 87. Mr. Workentine, any comments? Uh, there, uh, no, this is a routine uh, requirement under the Noxious Weeds Act. Uh, recommendation is uh, for City Council to appoint Mr. Trevor Schellenberg, the Community Services Officer, as the City's weed inspector again for the coming year. Thank you. Uh, before we move, proceed to uh, another question, and that is the, the changes that the provincial government made, which uh, eliminates the use of, of uh, herbicides on lawns. Uh, does that affect this uh, supervisor's job? Um, I would say indirectly. Uh, however, under the Noxious Weeds Act, there are still provisions uh, that, uh, if permitted under the Act, uh, the necessary herbicides to control noxious weeds can be applied under certain conditions. Very limited. Very limited. Council Siemens. Do you, Mayor, to administration, is there any training requirements in order to become an inspector? Yes, I believe there is an annual certification program to be able to carry out those duties. This is a dandelion. <laughs> All right. I need a motion, please. So move. Thank you, Councillor Penner. Second by Councillor Fair. Any discussion? No. Call for the question. All those in favor? Okay. So that is a very important job. I don't want to make light of it. <clears throat> 9J, we have the 2016 emergency plan amendments on page 88. Mr. Workentine. Uh, this information is provided by the city's uh, emergency measures coordinator, Mr. Dennis Vassard, on an annual basis. Uh, he uh, did conduct a review of the city's uh, emergency plan. Uh, the recommendations that uh, he is suggesting are uh, listed on page 88. Uh, the uh, amendments that are there are minor in nature, uh, more so just to clarify. However, a council resolution is required to adopt them. Thank you. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Swagstra? I'll make the motion we approve. Thank you. Second by Councillor Penner. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. These emergency plan amendments look like they make sense. Thank you. Anything further? It's already been said. Call for the question. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, we have a motion to cancel the April 19th regular council meeting. That is the election night uh, council meeting. Councillor Penner? So moved. Thank you. Second by Councillor Fair. Any discussion? Anything from Council? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. Any questions of Council? Seeing none. 11A, we have the Jacob Library uh, minutes on page 89. Take this information. We have 11B, the St. Rector Conservation District Minutes on page 93. Any questions? Take that as information. 
We have the Minister of Heritage in regards to Celebrate Canada program on page 101. Any questions? We will then move to 11D, and that's the uh, additional letter that we received from the Steinbeck Arts Council letter. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll take that as information. We have other business, and that is Councillor Penner wishes to bring a resolution forward. Yes, I'll hand it out, and then if I get a seconder, then I will make my comments. So you move this resolution? I'm making a motion. Be it resolved that the City of Steinbach adopt the following principles for future recreation planning. Number one, the City recognizes that a multiplex is not financially feasible at this time. Number two, the City shall continue planning for a performing arts centre in the downtown area provided adequate parking is made available and financial support comes in from other levels of government. Number three, at least 10% of the total capital costs of the Performing Arts Centre must be raised from private contributions. Number four, the City shall look to secure sufficient land for a future spectator arena in a non-downtown location. Number five, the City shall continue dedicating 1.241 mills of taxation to the Recreation Reserve each year. All right, thank you. Is there a seconder? Councilor Spikestro, go ahead. Over the past five and a half years, the Mayor and Council have considered recreation renewal in Steinbeck a priority. Early on in our first term, the topic of a multiplex came up. Since then, the Mayor and Council have spent considerable time and money commissioning studies and looking into the feasibility of a multiplex for Steinbeck. And what has been made abundantly clear is that a multiplex is not feasible for Steinbeck. An M&P study from 2012 put the price tag of a multiplex at over $100 million. And in 2014, a Stantec study presented us with a price tag of over $71 million for a multiplex. A community our size that takes in only $13 million per year in taxation simply cannot afford the financing or the operating costs of these projects without massive tax increases. And this is assuming we receive two-thirds funding from other levels of government, which is highly unlikely. So it is time for Council to put the multiplex discussion to rest and move in a new direction regarding recreation planning, one that is realistic and affordable. Our master plan should not be a building, but should be a broader vision for recreation in the community. What does this mean going forward? The motion confirms that the Performing Arts Centre will still be moving ahead, provided we receive money from other levels of government. It also includes the task force recommendation of requiring that 10% of the total project cost must be privately raised. Projects like this cannot move ahead without private support. The motion indicates that we will actively seek additional land at a non-downtown location for future spectator arena. This will allow private groups to already begin planning for this project. And if a new arena comes to fruition sometime in the future, the existing arenas, from one option at least, it would be for the existing arenas to be retrofitted for court sports and or soccer. This would, this would cost dramatically less than building everything at a new greenfield location. So instead of preventing future recreation, Ending the multiplex discussion actually gives clear direction on how recreation projects can be phased in. The motion affirms the 1.241 mills of taxation that currently go into the recreation reserve and that they will continue so we can continue to save for large projects such as the curling rink and performing arts center as well as have money available for small high impact projects such as the splash park and bush form pathway. In conclusion, by putting the multiplex conversation to rest, we can finally move forward with a realistic and affordable recreation vision for Steinbeck. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Swagstra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm uh, pleased to second the motion, and I want to start out by just uh, highlighting one key number. And the key number I want to highlight is $13 million. That is how much money the city takes in in tax revenue each year. That's what we get from our property taxes. So. When we're talking about our budgets and what we're spending on, all of that 
we are using $13 million. Uh, with that $13 million, we have to set priorities. And one of the things that we have done over the last few years is we've done a lot of research, a lot of investigation. Uh, we have looked into various multiplex options, and as Councillor Penner had mentioned, uh, we had a, a, an MNP study back in 2012 that uh, uh, suggested a multiplex uh, that was over $100 million, uh, and to locate that at 80 Penner Park. When you consider the size of that, that uh, even if we got two-thirds funding, and I do not think we would get two-thirds funding. I do not think it is realistic to expect that we would receive the equivalent of $67 million or more from the other levels of government for a project of that nature. Uh, even if we got that, that still leaves the city having to borrow $33 million or possibly even more. Work that out. Uh, even if you put the debt term over 20 years, that still requires uh, a tax increase because it's an annual debt payment of $2.4 million for the next 20 years. Consider that the money we're putting into the rec reserve is the equivalent of about $1.1 million. So that's assuming, best case scenario, two-thirds funding, other levels of government, long-term debt, and you still have a massive tax increase. Think of how much larger that is, you have a shorter debt period, or if we don't get two-thirds funding, we got 50%, now we're borrowing 50 million. That's one example. Last year we had Stantec Architects uh, do another study and uh, came up with a, an option that was in the range of approximately $71 million. Again, still very high numbers when you consider that we take in $13 million in tax revenue every year. That's what we have to work with. Now, fortunately, we are not stopping our progress in regards to recreation. Uh, far from it. What the motion does is it states a few things. It states clearly that we're going to keep putting money into our recreation reserve. It's a significant allotment that that money is going to continue because that means that we now have the option that gives us possibilities for what we, what we can do in the future. Uh, that is over and above our regular recreation spend, just so that we're clear. Uh, we are going to uh, continue uh, with planning for a performing arts centre and in in, we're specifying, as was recommended by the task force, that it will be in the downtown area, provided we have adequate parking and provided that we have adequate financial support from other levels of government and 10% total capital costs must be raised from private contributions. I think those are reasonable numbers and uh, that all, those are things that it's obviously dependent upon. But we are prepared to be able to move forward with that. Um, should be noted as well that we're stating and looking at uh, securing sufficient land for a future spectator arena in a non-downtown location. Uh, we've done a lot of studies and a lot of work and we've had a lot of feedback and certainly one thing that I've heard loud and clear is that when the time comes for a new spectator arena, uh, it doesn't work to put it downtown because there's not enough room to put it there. So let's acknowledge that. Let's say that it's not going to go there, it's going to go in a different location. It's just that simple. And so what we need to do is we need to be straightforward. We need to say, this is what we have done. We've done research. We have a variety of plans that we've gathered. And there's a reason that we haven't officially adopted the plans we've received so far. It's because they're outside the city's budget range. We all know that. That's, right. That's why they haven't been adopted to this point. So that does not mean that we stop planning in regards to recreation, but it does mean that we stop the, um, the planning for a large multiplex that is outside the feasibility of the city. Recreation remains a priority. Affordable recreation is a priority. Just to point out a few things we've done for recreation um, over the last six years or so. Uh, we have a new curling rink and that happened in conjunction with the deal that was made with the credit union. We have a, a splash park that was recently constructed beside the JCAP library. Very positive, a lot of great use. Uh, Bush Farm Pathway, uh, the uh, washrooms and change rooms are currently being constructed at the Islamic Soccer Park, the BMX Jump, jump Park that's going to be constructed at 80 Penner Park. These are positive things. Those are some examples of some of the things that we're doing in terms of recreation. And we intend to continue doing things like that. So we're going to move forward in a positive way. We're going to move forward by acknowledging what we are not able to do, but also emphasizing what we are able to do. Because even though we only take $13 million in tax revenue every year, there are still a lot of things we can do. This does not stop recreation. It does not stop moving forward. Um, it does send us in the direction of stating that here's what we can do, and here's some things that we cannot do. So I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you. Further discussion? <coughs> Notes are fair. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I, I have a question in regards to number two regarding adequate parking. Uh, we just uh, made a motion to buy another parcel on Hanover. Uh, and I'm just curious uh, if, if, uh, if I could uh, know how many parking stalls does the 
properties that we potentially, that we own in that section <coughs> give us at the current time, uh, what's the possibility of parking lot uh, stalls? Mr. Mm -hmm. Warkentine, if you can answer that, please. Uh, I can take an estimate, estimated guess. Uh, there's plus or minus about a dozen residential properties that the city has now purchased over time that remain vacant. Uh, with the average size, they would be able to uh, develop plus or minus 400 parking stalls. That, that is a very, very important uh, component uh, of, the, of this motion for me. And the, the reason I, uh, I, I wanted to know that is because I believe that as a council, we need to lead by example. And we need to live by the same example, uh, bylaws that we expect our taxpayers to. If we expect our taxpayers to provide parking for, uh, you know, for a thousand people uh, and uh, for, for, for uh, persons per car, uh, then that's what we need to do as well. So we've, we've uh, as was mentioned here, much discussion has taken place on this issue over the last six years. Um, when we started this discussion, it was labeled a multiplex, which probably was not a very good choice of words. We committed to start the process of renewing our recreation and cultural facilities. And we have already completed the first phase, which was a curling rink, and now we're moving to a phase two, which uh, we committed to last year when we decided the next step would be the uh, Performing Arts Center. And the survey we just completed is quite clear. People feel we should build this facility down, uh, downtown, providing we have sufficient parking, which is why the other question. Uh, I, I, I might add that, that we need to consider the arena that we have there right now, too, because if we have 1,000 uh, uh, people there and we have 800 people, that means there's 1,800 people. If we have four, then we're taxed. We, we need more than that. So, uh, so I, I believe that uh, it's very important that we lead by example and that we, uh, that we follow our bylaws to the T, just like we expect everybody else in the community to do that, so. Right. Council, uh, with your permission, may I speak before either of you? Okay. All right. I think we've all put a lot of effort into multiplex planning, recreation and cultural facility planning over the last number of years. <clears throat> It's not only taxing, but it's taxing. It takes a toll. And I want to acknowledge the work that you've all done. But I really feel as though we're out, see the finish line just ahead of our planning process, and we're abandoning it. We had a clear resolution a year ago that said, what the first phase was that we're going. But in addition to that, it also said very clearly that we're going to continue the master planning process so that we have a blueprint of where we're heading, a vision of where we're heading. That's what we were doing. That's what we've been all working towards over the last five and a half years. We've had ebbs and flows. There's been times when we haven't agreed. But this is the direction that we've been going. And I feel today as though we see that finish line and we're not getting there. We're deciding, you know what, let's drop, let's drop the baton and, and move on. There may well be merit in the direction that part of this resolution goes. But we haven't finished the plan. We have an MNP report that gives us two options. We have a few of our other uh, uh, Stantec reports that give us other options. We know they're flawed. We acknowledge that. There's problems with them. But that's, a, that's part of the process is finding those problems, putting it together, piling it up, and saying, OK, now what can we make of this work that we've done so far? How can we get a better project out of this? I think that's where we should be going. We have a lot of work that we've done. The other aspect is the whole idea of splitting things up, which this does, and putting it all together under one roof. That's been an ongoing discussion. I think we can all acknowledge that 
putting things close together under one roof, sharing services, could be a huge benefit for us. And we've looked at that. We've tried to do that even with some of our, our, uh, our studies that we have. It's worth looking at and continuing to look at. It's worth finishing what we started. This motion also here limits us in a very crucial time. We have a federal government that is ready to invest in infrastructure, not just hard infrastructure, which is incredibly important and we're very good at, but the social infrastructure that we're talking about here, the meeting places that we're trying to create for our city. We have a government that is just ready to pour millions and billions of dollars into this and we're limiting what we can even ask for. We can ask for an, uh, an art centre and we actually already have. Hopefully we're going to get our portion. But now's the time to be making sure that we have a bigger plan, a bigger vision that we can ask for. That we can put forward to see if we can't get our fair share of those tax dollars that are going to be spent somewhere in this country and they should be spent in Steinbeck. We're missing an opportunity. We have private contrib contributors that are desperate to see just a master plan. Show us that master plan. And we we're almost there. We've got more work to do. And if they see that master plan, they tell me, and I believe them, that they will invest. I think we're, I think we're missing the mark on that. I understand Council wants to move forward. I do too. We all do. I think the community does. They just want to see a plan. And that's why I think we should be going about it in a different way. I think we should be compiling what we have. I think we should be compiling it and saying clearly that here are some of the deficiencies of these plans. Give us some options. Let's try, and let's not give up on, on the efficiency of uh, putting things under one roof. And let's make sure that we don't discount the downtown for under one roof, but let's also make sure we say, you know what? 80 Penner Park, a greenfield somewhere, is an option too. I think the project should be able to be built in phases, and that's part of what we should be looking for. All buildings of the project should be planned under one roof, if possible. First phase should be the Performing Arts Centre, just like we said. Let's honour what we said. But let's honour what we said when it comes to a master planning process. I've said it here many times. I've said it here over the last year. I said it here two weeks ago. There should be land set aside for a future hotel and convention space. That's part of the plan. Should be adequate parking, like Councillor Fair says, absolutely. Access, egress, walkability, these are all things that we can put in there. I think we should also consider the third plan, the third option. And the third option is kind of what you're suggesting here, is putting it in two spots. And let's look at the merit of that, but let's also look at it uh, in a constructive way, if there's going to be savings when it comes to operating, if we, if we don't, if, or if there's going to be additional costs for us, if we do it in the in the dual vision approach, like we might just talk about this. But let's ask those questions. Let's have that information in front of us. Let's take a little extra time in moving forward. Take a few couple more months. We've spent five and a half years. can't support the motion. Councillor Penner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It has been um, quite a journey for this council as we've uh, begun the process of exploring a multiplex or a master plan um, so many years ago. We have all seen 
the numbers. We have all looked at the studies. We've, we have numerous studies that give us the numbers and give us the possibilities and give us so many different scenarios. But I believe today that this motion is a master plan. This motion actually is realistic. It's not pie in the sky. It's, it's something that this city can do. It also is based on very realistic projections of federal and provincial funding. Let's be realistic. We can't move ahead on plans and dreams and visions. We need concrete numbers. We need concrete plans. And this motion is concrete. This motion is realistic. This motion can actually happen for our city in a very fiscally responsible way. And that's number one for me. Thank you. Our funk, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I've, I've looked at this motion, I've read this motion now, and I've heard the discussion, and I, I don't know if I can add a lot of new stuff, uh, but, but Mr. Mayor, this, this motion does give us flexibility. This motion, I agree with Councillor Pinner, is a master plan. Mm 